So lately I've been getting a lot of requests on Instagram and also on Facebook um, from people who want to know what is the name of this big red apparatus, where can they get this thick bar pad, what kinds of bands are these and where can they get them. And so I thought I'd film a video describing the ideal hip thrusting situation. Um, I'm going to have a blog post where I have a picture of all this stuff and I label it and I have links to everything. That way uh, you, you, you'll have, you, you know, you don't have to search for anything. You can just go to the blog post, which I'll have in the YouTube video, I'll have in the description, um, the link to the blog post. So you can just click on all the links. Um, but I've been hip thrusting for eight and a half years and not only with myself but prescribing it to clients. So. I have learned a ton along the way and I can save you a lot of time and frustration if you watch this video. So who will benefit from watching this video? Anyone who does hip thrust. Most of you watching probably hip thrust at a commercial gym and you know you probably use a bench like this and you just use their barbell and they probably have a crappy thick bar or a crappy bar pad that you use or maybe you use like a yoga mat that you fold up or something. So you'll benefit from learning from some of these items that you can purchase that are relatively inexpensive. But others um, that are watching this might, maybe some of you are personal trainers, maybe some of you are strength coaches, maybe you are just a lifter who wants to buy this for your garage so you can hip thrust with bands, you know, very frequently, like five days a week. Um, or maybe you want to buy one of these hip thrusters for your facility. Maybe you own a studio or own a gym and you can buy these. So um, everyone will benefit from watching this. Now, uh, first I'm going to roll through the equipment and tell you where I bought it and then I'll demonstrate. So this first piece of equipment is this big giant red thing. This is called the hip thruster and I invented this because I own this garage gym here. I wanted a standalone unit. I don't want to take up a power rack um, or a bench. You know, I want the benches to be used for bench pressing, the power racks to be used for squatting, and this way I can just have a standalone unit. So this hip thruster doesn't move. You stand on it, you don't have to have someone pushing up from behind, or you don't have to put this up against a wall or up against a rack. Um, this bench here is 18 inches high. It's too high for most people. I made this 16 inches high, and I made the padding kind of wrap around here. Some people will hip thrust against like plyo boxes and their backs get all scraped up. So I made sure this cushioning is very, is good. And it also has these bags here, so you can attach bands to them. You can do band hip thrusts in a power rack, or you can hook the bands to heavy dumbbells, but the ideal situation is to have a hip thruster. And the hip thruster you can buy from the hipthruster.com, or if you're in Europe, you can buy it from uh, hipthruster.uk.com or something like that. I have links to those. But uh, um, in the cost in America is $499. Um, and once again, Sornex makes me for those, but you order off the hipthruster.com. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this red pad here. They make this in blue as well. I do not make this. I, was, I had every intention of doing my own thick bar padding and calling it like the hip thrust sponge or something like that. But the, the uh, inventor of this squat sponge did something nice. I started promoting it for him and he sent me three of these. So because of this nice gesture, I don't become his competition, even though I could probably sell a bunch more than he could. Um, I told him he should name it the hip thrust sponge, not the squat sponge, because I would use this, I use this for hip thrusts all the time, but I wouldn't use it very often for squats. But anyway, that is purchased off of Amazon, and it's like 25 bucks, you get it within a week. Just type, go to Amazon, type a search for squat sponge, or you can search on Google, and that'll come up. Alright, the next thing I want to discuss is the mini bands. So for women, I prefer them to use these guys here. These mini bands I bought from Perform Better, and uh, this is the second strongest, the, the blue, and then their strongest is the black. And those cost like three bucks or something like that. And that's from performbetter.com. Um, and we wear these around our knees sometimes when we hip thrust to increase the challenge onto the glutes. For most of the women prefer to wear these mini bands beneath their knees. Um, some prefer to wear them above their knees. 
Now for men, these mini bands work fine, but for stronger men, I prefer the hip circle. So this hip circle, it's, uh, it's made, invented by Mark Bell, and it's, it's awesome. You can use this for all sorts of things, for lateral band walks and things like that, just like the other mini bands. But this is just a little sturdier and more heavy duty. These we wear above the knees. And this uh, Rogue, I, I, uh, you can purchase this off of Rogue and other websites too. I think the cost is around $25 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, the next item I want to talk about is this Eric's balance pad. So, first, uh, I when I first started hip thrusting, I used for, for bar padding, I used a Hampton thick bar pad. And then I started using this, but this became weird because it's just so bulky if we put the bar here. And then now I prefer the squat sponge. So you might be wondering why I have this here. There are a lot of women in general um, who do better when they sit on that when they hip thrust. So this just brings the brings it up a couple inches. So if uh, essentially it would be like moving this down to 14 inch height. So uh, we use this for women that are either very short, like five foot two and under, or some of the women are actually normal height, like maybe they're like five five, but they have really long legs and short torso. So for the women who have shorter torsos, they sit their butts on here and then they get thrust. So this is, again, it's called an Eric's balance pad, and I bought this off from Perform Better. Um, I think, or, or Amazon, they both sell it, and I think it's like 59 bucks. But they also, there are knockoffs of these that you can investigate. I don't know the names of them, but they look like these, but I can't vouch for them because I've never, I don't know if they're just as good or not because I've never used them. Okay, now I want to talk about these guys here. Um, these are the long bands, and you can get these from two different places, Sorenet or Elite FTS. This here is an Elite FTS band, these ones are Sorenex, but uh, I actually like the Elite FTS band more, um, but both of these work better, or work, work really well. Um, I think the prices of these range from like 10 to $30, I think this is like 30 and this is like 10 but this is called a strong band, and I recommend that you buy two strong bands. So. Uh, uh, two strong bands for the stronger guys. Um, this is an average band and this is a light band. And I think the length is 22 inches or something. So, uh, the begin first timers, when they do band hip thrust, they might start off with just a light. Then after a couple weeks, they move to an average. After a month or two, almost every woman is up to using a strong band because I, I prioritize hip thrusting. Uh, my strongest women, for the most part, use the combination of, they'll use the strong uh, and the average band combined together. The stronger men will combine two strong. So, you can also pair these bands up around your hips with the mini bands worn around the knees, which I'll show you. And then the last thing before I demonstrate, see these mats here? These are an inch and a half thick. And the reason why I have these here, these are very important. This squat sponge is thick. If you hip thrust without that squat sponge, you can roll the bar over your legs. But if you use that squat sponge now, you're, you can't roll it over. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, if I just have the bar here and I don't use any padding at all, to get into position I can just roll this over my legs like that. But because I'm using a squat sponge, this can't fit over. This can't fit over my legs. Right here it hits and I can't get into position. So. What works really well here is to just have these little guys. And it's funny because all this is, 
This is the same thing as this guy right here. The little foot mat for the hip thruster. I just had Sornex send me two of them. But there is a flooring company that makes these. But you might be able to make these by yourself out of uh, plywood or something. You could just cut plywood and use wood glue to glue them together. Or uh, some people use bumper plates or just plates, uh, 45 pound plates to put next to them. But it's, it makes your life so much easier when you hip thrust, especially when you use this squat sponge. One thing I will tell you, if you don't have thick bar padding and you just have it against your pelvis, the bar, or it's like a flimsy padding, it hurts. And because of that pain, pain shuts down muscle activation. So you can't get the best hip thrusting workout. So if you're in any pain, it's not gonna, you're automatically not going to be able to develop the glutes as much. So this essentially helps you get a better glute workout. So here's what it looks like. Um, I roll the bar over, I get into place from here. See how this ends up being perfect fit. Get into place. And hip thrust. Now, if you want to use the these guys for the women, they will put these. Thank you. 
combine everything if you wanted. So, if you wanted to, you could do, you could have all this at the same time, like this. So now I've got barbell, bands around the hips, and bands around the knees. Thank you for watching.